Remember, kids, if you're going to go to a party, even if you know some of the people there, there's going to be drinking and games like beer pong and tons of drinking and drugs and God knows what else, but so much drinking and drinking and drinking. Even if you're among friends, you want to make sure that you remember a few things. Remember where you parked your car? If you get an Uber, make sure you get the right Uber, not somebody that's going to potentially take you into the woods and drop you off where you're never seen again. And also, remember to bring a spare phone charger. Otherwise, you could end up as part of a series of unfortunate events, not by Lemony Snicket's, like the people in Oh, You're Killing Me, My Goodness, This Film Was Like, Ready or Not, But Without the Supernatural Plot elements and not some are weaving and this song reference oh is killing me but yes you're killing me directed by beth hannah and jaron louder this is beth's directorial debut and jaron did a few movies like the inhabitant and stay out of the fucking attic that was the actual title of the movie that movie should have stayed off a fucking streaming service because even though the idea was fine the execution was terrible this is written by two different people, so two people directed it, two people wrote it. <laughs> we have Walker Hare. No, not Tortoise and the Hare. He has acted in some movies, including Babylon. He's also directed some shorts, and you know what? Hey, that's fine. Keep yourselves busy. That's always good. And also by Brad Martichello, or Martichello. Sounds like some kind of fancy drink. He's done shorts. So remember the movie Ma? <clears throat> Remember that movie with Octavia Spencer pretty much outshining everybody, even though the cast is decent? McKaylee Miller, who plays Eden, she was one of the main girls in that. That's pretty much it for about any of the current star power. I mean, uh, Dermot Mulroney and Anne Heche show up. Fortunately, Anne Heche was not driving because, well, this movie came out well after she passed away. And her driving be and her behind the wheel in any capacity, especially in the last couple of years of her life, didn't end all that well, did it? Oh, yeah, it's going to be one of those goddamn reviews. Bryce Anthony Heller, along with Will Dushner, or Deisner, Dusner, Deisner, sorry if I mispronounce that, and Kiara Milner. So, yeah, I'm probably mispronouncing all these names, and you know what? Honestly, I have nothing against the cast. I'm sure that the people that wrote this movie and directed this movie are nice people, and they were trying to do something, but yes, this is basically, if you took Ready or Not, the semblance of the plot, and pretty much replaced it with super annoying characters that you didn't care if they lived or died. Essentially, there's a missing person, um, and that's a bit of a subplot that ends up becoming the main plot. There's a missing girl. A uh, Her sister is looking around to figure out what's going on. There's this big old party um, by... Barrett Schroeder, played by um, Mr. Bryce. His parents are away, played by Dermot and Anne. And basically what ends up happening is the sister's looking around. She gets driven home by Eden. <clears throat> Eden, who is bound, determined to get into this fancy university that uh, Barrett's dad has something to do with. Because he's a powerful politician that we see really not do much of anything. We don't really see him do much of anything at all except very, very cliched shit. And it starts off at first where you think, okay, this movie might be all right. There's some decent humor, or at least attempts at humor, and they establish that Zara and Eden are friends. Okay, boom, right there. There's also an actress who uh, plays a character named Kendra. And because the movie was filmed in just one goddamn location, some of the characters got really goddamn confusing, especially considering that none of them have any depth. They're about as thin as this piece. They're about seriously as thin as this piece of paper. I'm not even goddamn kidding. That's about how thin they are. It's freaking ridiculous. It's absolutely insane. So yeah, they end up going to this party, and then they find out the party is more than they bargained for. They still haven't found what they're looking for. They find something that leads them to believe somebody at the party might have had something to do with the missing girl. And from there, we have a standoff with idiots trying to outdo each other with more idiotic shit, and I'm convinced at this point that while the directors and the writers and the crew had talent, that they had to have a spare. They had to have, a, uh, you know, two directors, two writers, and they had to have, you know, spares of every crew member because I imagine the one director took a bit of a break and said, I'm going to go get blackout drunk because this project's really terrible, and the other director took over, and then when they sobered up, then the other person took a turn, and the writers did the same damn thing. And the key grips, and the camera work, and everything, and the actors must have even been on copious amounts of alcohol because there is no way that anybody sober could have thought that this was a good idea. This movie is subjectively terrible. 
Very, very subjectively fucking terrible. One of the worst things I have seen this year. And I was giving it a chance because I looked at the poster and, okay, <laughs> getting ready or not vibes. And it doesn't have to have the supernatural stuff about ready or not. It just has to have the same, maybe not even the same level of humor. But, no, it just ends up being ready or not, here I come, you can't hide. Oh, boy, you're killing me softly with these stupid cliches. Okay, I tried there. Man, the Fugees. Boy, that's a long time ago. God, I'm so old. So yeah, every character does something really, really stupid. Any time that any characters could escape a situation, they make it worse. Because they can't leave this location because shit, our funding hasn't come in and we can't get away from this location yet. The movie just... Eden isn't even worth rooting for and she's not a bad actress. None of the people in this movie are particularly bad actors. In fact, that's actually the biggest frustration about this whole thing is Dermot Mulroney has been in a lot of shit lately. Apparently he either just doesn't care anymore or he's just taken any project like he's Nicolas Cage without trying to pay off the insane amount of debts. And this was one of the last movies that Anne H. was part of. But you can do one location horror movie, suspense movie shoots if you actually have good characters. That only helps if you have characters. This doesn't have characters. This has just a series of bullshit occurrences that made me laugh more than anything, and I don't think it was intended to be a comedy horror. I mean, if it was intended to be a comedy horror, I wasn't laughing for the right reasons. I wasn't laughing like, oh, that's so hilarious. I was laughing like, God, I need to do something because I seriously want to run my head into the wall because I can't stand a movie this bad. I do want to say, however, I always make sure to throw a few bucks on Amazon if they're available on Amazon before any streaming service and watch them. I paid almost eight bucks after tax, and you know what? That's fine. Don't mind throwing a few bucks towards filmmakers. Even if I hate a movie, at least I contributed something, because that's what people should do. That's how more films get made. That's how better films get made. And even if stuff is churned out like this, at least the, you know, the crew and the cast and everybody, they're being supported. Even if it's just a few bucks for me, more and more people do that. That's how movies make their money. That's why I don't pirate shit. Anyway... Jesus, this sucked. Every character was stupid, and the conclusion was even funnier. And not in a good way. It's like, oh, wow, we really just had to wrap shit up. This movie is 94 minutes. Actually, it's about 90 minutes once the end credits start rolling. And I'm thinking, did they even know what the hell they were doing? How did how did they pace a movie this goddamn bad with a simple plot? It was, uh, you know, in a, a tribute to Anne Heche, which... Okay, fine, whatever, I guess that's fine. Apparently she was delightful to work with, and that's great. Don't let her behind the wheel of a car, especially now. But the movie ends up being terrible, really, really terrible. That being said, throw a few bucks towards it. I mean, why not? Get some friends together. Maybe you'll enjoy it. It's really, really bad. Watch Ready or Not. Ready or Not's a lot better. Yeah, it has more of a budget, but still a lot better. Plus, tomorrow leaving. Hooray! <sighs> Three... Two, one, spoilers. Okay, the whole thing about uh, the missing girl, <laughs> it turns out that Barrett, Schroeder, this character Gooch, uh, Will, and the character of um, Kendra all had something to do with the girl's disappearance. There's videos of you know her being harassed, taken home, given alcohol, and then she races off and Barrett doesn't want to leave it alone and basically ends up running her over. We see that video way later on. Before that, we get Eden taking um, Zara up so she can sleep off a goddamn, you know, drunken binge after Eden's dad has dropped them off. And Eden's dad has a slight limp and needs some kind of surgery, but he keeps doing septic tank work because he's a hard worker. He's certainly a hardworking character. He's a harder worker than anybody that put this thing together. That's unfair. I'm sure the crew tried. I'm sure they did. I'm trying to not be mean, but when I see a movie that's absolutely objectively fucking terrible, or subjectively terrible, because some people might like this, bad. I just have to rant on it. I just have to <clears throat> knock it completely. Anyway, they end up trapped in this room. She sees enough of the phone. She, too many pronouns, pal. Sorry, Vince. Eden sees videos on Gooch's phone. This is after this character, Gooch, has filmed himself sleeping next to Zara's, you know, unconscious body. That That's a great character right there. And then, and then, she has Gooch's phone, sees enough of this stuff, and then the phone dies. She needs to get a charger, 
And these three idiots, Barrett, Gooch, and Kendra, have a standoff with Eden and Zara. Zara ends up sobering up eventually. Gooch sneaks through the goddamn window to out out the you know window through the bathroom window and is trying to reason with Zara. <laughs> and then it turns out everybody just eventually does stupid shit like axing a door, a balsa wood door with a goddamn you know little axe. That's hilarious. <clears throat> and <laughs> Eden's dad shows up during this whole damn thing. Kendra tries to get th uh, through the window on a ladder and gets shoved off, and then she ends up getting, she ends up stabbing herself with her own, uh, or pruning shears or a knife or something or pliers. I mean, I would have rather had my teeth pulled out with pliers rather than watch this goddamn thing. <laughs> and <laughs> before this, though, Kendra is saying to Barry, why don't you want to chop down the door? Oh, I don't want to, I don't want to spend my whole weekend shopping for doors. I don't want to spend my whole, you know, my whole life watching movies like this, but what the hell? Why not watch stuff like this? Because maybe you find a rare gem. You can't find much worse this year. And then she fell to her death. Oh, darn, I feel so, well, actually, she doesn't die, but she eventually does when Barrett has the bright idea to drag her corpse in there with a whole bunch of blood and everything. <clears throat> Quick, Get the phone at the expense of everybody else, including your friends or any conven plot conveniences. And suddenly, the parents show up. It's about 50 to 55 minutes into the movie. And they're like, Barrett, you need to clean this shit up. What the hell are you doing? The dad's been KO'd. <laughs> and he comes to. And or almost KO'd. I mean, Eden's Eden's dad, that is. Too many dads, pal. And Dermot, uh, Dermot Mulroney... Tries to reason with him. Say, hey, we'll pay your way through college. We'll pay for your dad to get surgery. Just this. You don't have to worry. This phone may be charging, but don't worry. You don't have to see this video because it's not going to make a difference. And then it does, and it seems like Anne Heche is being the stand-up person. No, she's not. She's actually the evil one of the whole goddamn thing. <laughs> they see the video, and they see, Melissa, or they see the girl being run over. I think her name was Melissa. I don't really care because it doesn't fucking matter. And then... They had, uh, basically, they're, you know, they had been offered drinks. The drinks were drugged, so they can't get out of the house. And then they're drugged with a bunch of propofol and everything. Apparently, um, apparently Michael Jackson's doctor was on set. And then they're put in this car, and they're going to be made, it, all these rich people that you would think would hire other people to do this shit. No, they do it themselves, and then they push, they have the car go into a lake. But... Everybody ends up alive, seemingly, kind of, maybe, because Eden somehow is alive, uh, Zara's alive, the dad's alive, and then a little bit later, she comes back, gets the axe, chops Dermot Mulroney in the neck, <coughs> Mulroney that is, gets stabbed in the leg, in the femoral artery seemingly by Anne Hish, but then earlier, they had threatened Gooch with being uh, shocked to death in the bathtub, and then she, Eden, Pushes Anne Hesh into the bathtub. Anne Hesh rises up, ah, and then the hair dryer gets pushed in there, and she gets shocked to death. And then Barrett shows up and gets in a fight with them. Has an old gun from a uh, that his that his great grandfather or grandfather stole from a Ger World War II German guy that he killed. I guess <clears throat> don't know how you get steal from a corpse, but nevertheless, because it's not like he's going to use it. And then they're out in the um, they're out in the courtyard. She runs him over. Or tries to run him over. He's all damaged. She's going to shoot him. Throws the gun away stupidly because we must have one more standoff where she's against the car. No, no. I had a chance to kill him and I didn't. And then Zara shows up, hits him in the back of the head. And the running gag throughout this whole movie was him saying, you're killing me. Oh, you're killing me. Oh, <clears throat> playing beer pong. You're killing me. Oh, you went into the college. Oh, you're killing me. Eh, listen. And then he dies on the road. And that's it. How dare you? How fucking dare you? You're killing me. How dare you? God, this was terrible. I didn't expect much. I don't expect much from horror movies these days, unless it's by a really good studio, but goddamn, this wasn't even fun. Not even a bit. Agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter, well, F, by the way, F, F, just in case, just in fucking case you're wondering, gets an F. It's gonna really, really be hard to not have this on my worst films of the year list by the end of the year. Agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ripplin. I'll see you soon.